Healthcare. I'm the host, uh, Donato Sobunas, and uh, tonight I'm joined by a very special guest. Uh, simple as that. EuroLeague regular season MVP, uh, EuroLeague finals MVP, and brand new EuroLeague champion, Vasily Mzic. Hi. Vasilya, welcome to the show. And uh, it's been a hell of a day for both of us. You came to Antalya at 5 in the morning. Yeah. For me, it's my fourth interview, but man, it's going to be the best. Uh, I want to start uh, from the celebration part. I remember you were in Joe Lauska's uh, podcast and you told that uh, Nikola Jokic texted you after you won the Euroleague, after you became the MVP. And you told him that, you know, let's have some party in Serbia, you know, that Serbian music in Serbian way. Did you manage to, to arrange that party? So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't have that party, unfortunately, because he has his his life that he in generally tried to keep as much as he can privately and uh, imagine when he he came back from the season i don't believe that anybody make any interview for his mvp season which probably if all other players from all over the world made it they would not be able to live from the journalists and everybody but that's him uh, we met once in the practice of mega legs we spoke a little bit uh, it was very nice to see him and uh, his his approach to the life is something that I always mention as a unbelievable, how humble he is, how normal he is as a person, and we will probably have our chance to celebrate. But me personally, I definitely made a party, a uh, couple of parties, and uh, I was really uh, full of emotions uh, during the summer because uh, even we lost qualifications that uh, for our country definitely hurts and, and for us too. But beside that, I believe that it was one of the best seasons that I had. Uh, with the reason to celebrate, I did it. But now it's time to to move on and prepare for the next challenges. It was one of the most remarkable seasons for Serbian players. Uh, you, the MVP of the Euroleague, Nikola winning the NBA MVP, Milos Teodosic becoming the EuroCup MVP. And the thing is that what is nice that you met him in Negalex, uh training camp, uh, Megalex facilities, uh, let's say, it's, it's the place where, where it all started. Now you're sitting here at the MVP, he, he is our, in his own world, you know, Nikola in his own world, world uh, as the NBA MVP, and it all started in Mega Zura. Uh, what do you remember the most about these first days with Nikola, what made him unique at that back in the day, and what made your connection unique, you know, because you were a point guard, he was a big man, I believe there were a lot of pick-up situations between you. Yeah, uh, sometimes I make uh, jokes with my agent, now it's time to finish his career, because he made everything possible that he dreamed about, Mishko. He made two MVPs for, from, from the club that he built for developing players, and uh, of course he will not finish his career uh, as an agent and as a, as a leader of that club, but uh, it's something really amazing. Uh, first of all, um, that environment that Mega uh, has now, uh, it's on the way, way higher level than when I started. Uh, the environment and the organization when I started was at the beginning uh, with the vision that it, they would like to come to this point that they are now with uh, how many drafted players with uh, great facility. Even that time we had good facilities, but this is on another level. Every practice they have now five, six uh, scouts from NBA. At that time, if we have once, one in one month, it was great. But what I want to say is that if you look back at that time, uh, the beginning always is the harder, hardest thing. Uh, in the beginning, nobody wants to believe as now, uh, because now it's easy to understand that Mishko develop young players and for guys it's privileged to come to play. But at that moment, for me to get that chance from him to support me together with Dejan Milovic coach, it was tremendous because uh, it was a new, it was a new thing for Serbia <coughs> to give kids 16 years old a right to be a leader of team, senior team with a, with good result that year. We reached uh, top four teams and we, we developed Mega for another level uh, quick, quicker than they expected. And then two years later, uh, Jokic joined us 
And uh, it, from my perspective, I remember everything what was going on at that time about him, but I really didn't believe that this is something that good. And um, uh, he came and he joined uh, in the moment when, when he was the, dominating the junior league. And maybe Mishko already spoke about it, but uh, in generally, two, three, two, three years up and down, uh, you know all players from generation, like older or younger, but nobody knew about him, really. And we were sh shocked, who is that kid from Vojvodina? that is killing and we, we all expected that there is some strong guy who is, you know, like matured uh, and, and get bigger than other kids at that age earlier. So he dominated because of that. But actually there was a baby. Like I can say honestly, he was a fat, he was not so fast. And then they took him for a practice and uh, the guy who was at that time our strength coach and he's still my strength coach, he, he took him and he gave him some exercises and he said, this kid is unbelievable. Like he catch everything in a second. Like, especially him at that time, he didn't have any, any idea that he can be a basketball <laughs> player because he was just playing for fun. And from that period, he still was uh, more with the junior team. Uh, they tried him to give chance little by little in, in the first team, but he was that dominating in the junior league that he had to try in the first team. And a uh, year later, my last year in Mega, was the year that we finally started to play together. And I always say it, for me, this IQ, it's, I've never seen. I can say Teo Dosic is really clever guy and uh, Teo is, Teo's IQ is really also on another level, but this is way bigger. Like he, he understands the game so well. He understands so simple. He's so effective. He, Mm, he's so, he has so big self-confidence because he just thinks this is a game and all the time still he's thinking this is a game. So imagine, he didn't change nothing except he started to pay attention to the body, he started to take care about all professional things that are important to develop your life and your career, but still he's playing the same way he was playing with us. He was, at that time he was doing this Tippins, uh, fakes behind the head, uh, passes behind the back. And we were like, okay, he can't do this on that level, but he actually he can. And um, when we split, I went to, to Bayern. Uh, I watched that season when he was MVP of, of uh, Abba League. That was ridiculous. Even we played two times friendly games with Bayern. We had some room in the season. We came to Berger, we played against him, against them friendly games and I was shocked like how dominating he is at that moment and uh, I'm, I'm really proud that I shared uh, the moments with him. Even we spoke two days ago, I cannot say that we are closest guy friends, but we have very good and nat uh, natural relationship, respect between each other and that's something very important for me because I know that he really respects first of all people as a, as a human being and as a, their personality, then as a professional. And uh, I'm very happy that he also felt uh, something special for me that when I won the title and, and MVP, he, he texted me. Of course, I text him sometimes, but I don't like to be annoying to people mm. that are not the close people around me. But uh, that common respect, it's, it means a lot to me. And especially, as you said, to be with someone on that level from the same group, it's really, uh, it's really special. And you were close to joining him again in the NBA, and that's the main topic I wanted to discuss with you because it's fair enough to say that you were the top uh, free agent in this uh, Euroleague market, not just the Euroleague market. Uh, a lot of people thought that you will end up in the NBA uh, this summer, but you were always so uh, confident, you were always so calm, and when everybody else was sending you to the NBA, you were just saying, hey guys, relax, I didn't make my mind yet, and I will make my decision when the time comes, and I don't have any no, uh, thoughts about what I'm going to do. So can you tell me what was your strategy? How that you know, big decision looks like? Were you like waiting for the season to finish, to, for Mishko you know, to bring, let's say, three best offers for you, and I will pick uh, before July 1st or something like that? What was your strategy? Uh, uh, main thing for me before I make every decision, 
uh, it's that I make when I'm calm. So uh, for everything. It means that uh, I, I can say that since Tofa's time, uh, that summer 2016, that was the first time that uh, it's not the same, uh, but like now. But at that time, it was the first time that I settled down with my family and with myself, and uh, I made decision by my feeling, like what what I feel about that offer, what I feel about that decision. Because uh, at the end of the day, I just want to live life with my decisions, not decisions that someone tell me. Okay, I listen to people, I speak with people, I discuss about things. But at the end of the day, I just want to have that stamp that is my stamp for everything. Like big or small decision for many, every decision is the same. So from that point, I understood uh, even that season was really with a lot of ups and downs in Tofash. I had the surgery, I had the injury and this and that, but at the end, the season came up with the best way for me uh, and uh, I was first time uh, happy that it meant something to me that I made a decision. Even there were big doubts that why I'm going to Tofas, why is it going to be a good decision or not. But when I make decision, I go 100% to that decision. And that happened then next summer, uh, I mean summer after uh, Tofas about Zagiris, st still. Uh, with some con uh, discussion with agent, with uh, some uh, players that played with Sharas and all of that, with coach from uh, Tofa Shorhunene, I spoke with them and then at the end I just understood that this is the moment that I have to move. And I have to do that, even I sacrificed many things at that moment, which was, which was positive things. But still I made the decision, so I stayed behind, I keep myself pushing that year and uh, at the end it was a tremendous season. Then again, I had offers to stay in Jogiris or to move to FS or uh, to go, I think, Olympiakos or uh, Maccabi, there was some some offers too. Then I made decision to go to FS, which was totally unlogical for everyone at that moment, but it still. Yeah, still I made with some vision and something, some, some, some picture in my head that even I said that to some people at that time that of course I'm gonna, I probably sound to them like what, what is this guy talking about? But still I believed and I stayed behind them. Again, uh, after that season I didn't go to Real with same reasons that I wanted to make decision whether to go or not because I was following my feelings that it wasn't enough just one year to play that level and just move forward to another team. I wanted to confirm and to prove one more time the same same way that I played that year. And after that, maybe to go on market and check options. So the people who take me, they have to take me with with the reason that and with the way of thinking that, OK, we can change him. This is Mitic. But after one year, I didn't feel this was enough. So with Corona, in the second year, I kept myself convincing that it's still not time to go to NBA, it was the last year, or to move somewhere else in Europe. I wanted to play one more season here and uh, all these decisions make me feel more confident for upcoming decisions. And it happened this summer too. So what, 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 what does it mean make when I'm calm? With all topics around me and with all uh, rumors that were going on uh, were, were going on around me i was aware that people are thinking differently okay now it's perfect timing you want everything you are in the best stage and this and that but i don't think like that because uh, in life everything is happening so fast and i'm always ready for everything as much as i can i don't think anything is guaranteed and that's the thing that makes me feel peaceful so even now, when I make this decision, three years deal, guaranteed, good, good everything, I still feel that it's just like any other contract. One year, and then after that, I will see. Of course, the good thing about this contract that I have options to leave because of buyouts, but I don't think, I don't think about the future. I think just about now. And uh, specifically what happened before, uh, during this summer, actually, I received very early offer from Ceska, uh, unexpected, uh, I mean, not unexpected offer, but it was unexpected early offer. I, uh, it was, I think, June. Uh, it was uh, June while I was in, with the national team. And uh, it was, of course, a great offer. And I was really happy that they show interest to me. And I believe Ceska is 
always will be and, and, and it's still a great great team and one of the best so when i realized that they 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 started hunting uh in the same time i also discussed with mishko about nba and there were some 90 percent uh, clear offers from nba not 100 but 90 percent about details in the contract and and uh, of course i didn't expect any promises from minutes wise but kind of role uh, with Oklahoma uh, and then when I realized that Oklahoma is still not sure because they have this they had actually one and a half month extra to make a draft to wait to see how many uh, players they will take and uh, what they're gonna do with the trades for me it was too long to wait it was too long especially when I had that offer from Ceska. Of course, I spoke with FS2 because I, I feel here very happy. And I told them that I have a really serious offer from Ceska. And uh, in that moment, I want to give them priority if they can match or if they can, they can offer me something similar. And uh, I was very happy that they understood my desire, that I want to stay here, not to leave just because someone said that I have to leave. And at the, at the end, they offered me same. Uh, same conditions, actually the conditions that I wanted uh, and I just didn't feel that I had to wait. I just felt that this is it. To reach this level that I'm now in Euroleague and I always say that to, to my friends, uh, it was so hard, really. Like every year I was signing one plus one plus one plus one contract to reach this level because I knew that if I have these options in the contract, I can either renew the contract or I can leave to go for the step higher. So all this risk that I took in previous years brought me to position to, to, to choose one of these three, which was all great. But at the end, I felt that uh, by chasing these new challenges, I finally realized that I don't want to chase anymore. It's not connected to my ambitions. I'm always uh, ready to um, put myself for a new challenge and prepare and work on myself. But I felt finally happy that I don't need to change my jersey just for, for I don't know, Nike brand or, or different logo. And at the end of the day, of course, we were champions, of course. So everything together was so good and moments were not perfect for me to wait that long. The other thing what was really important for me at that time was we played with national team. I felt really tired. And uh, with all these games that we had there, and uh, we also had the pressure that we have to win this tournament, I realized that if I'm waiting till uh, August, and uh, if possibly at that moment we reach Olympic Games, that would be probably that period when uh, free agency is happening, I'm risking too much. Because if I would get hurt with the, without signing in Europe, the, the contract with the NBA would not be valid because you have to pass the medical check. So all together, I'm just saying the details that maybe I don't need to say, but I'm totally feeling free to say, that all together brought me in position to say, hey, this is enough good, I'm very happy, do it. And that's how I make it. And all my decisions are, are actually, when I look backward in the previous uh, previous contracts or, or whatever I made, are not so publicly followed, like mm, loud, you know, there people are not talking too much about it because this is how I actually make decisions. I'm not making from decisions like you imagine now I'm signing with FS, biggest deal in Euro, blah, no, no. This is a decision. I keep moving forward and it happened now too. So I'm really happy. I'm really happy with my decision. Did you get uh, a lot of questions uh, when you held you rejected, you know, NBA opportunity, or did you get, did you have a lot of, let's say, advisors, you know, who thought that they know better than you, for example, and try to, you know, push their agenda, agenda for your decision? Uh, yes, I did. I had. Uh, there was one of the biggest supporters to me, and I'm really uh, thankful for that. Uh, it was Igor Kokoshkov. He, he was really trying to convince me to, in a positive way, not to convince me, but suggest me NBA because he believes that I can do that. I'm on that level. And, and when I spoke with him, I really understood and I understand all perspective of others about me. And I see that too. I mean, for me, the reason why I would like to play in the NBA still is just I want to feel myself there. 
it's not that I want to sign 100 million or 200 or whatever, it, it's, or this is my dream. No, I just want to feel what these guys are doing there according to a Euroleague level. So am I really good that much or not? But it's not like I'm doubting myself. I just, this is my goal, let's say. But at the end of the day, the things that I'm doing in Europe and the life that I have in Europe, it's really high quality of everything that it's, as I said, it's very, very hard to reach also in Europe. Like for me, four years ago when I was signing for Tofash, one year, one game per week, and now to be in this position, and today I play against these guys from Tofash, and even when I'm talking to them, this transition is that fast that I'm not aware of that. I'm just going for, I'm moving forward, but the, the transition is really obvious. Like, it's not that I'm saying good things about myself, but I believe that not many people believe that I can f that fast reach this level. And, and that's why I respect myself more because, and I, do, I just don't want to listen to people by giving advice. And also people know me, close people around me, that as I said, all my decisions more and more and more I make by myself. So they are not, I believe they are not feeling even confident to, to, to tell me too much mm -hmm. things about, about the NBA or to give me so many advices because they, they realize that at the end of the day, I don't believe that my decisions are all, always the best, but they are mine. So they, they trust me. They trust me that I will make best for myself. So what will be at the end, nobody knows. But so that's, that's starting from my family, uh, father, sister, when, I, when my mother was alive, even her, they just always tell me, do how you feel. Because last six, seven decisions in my life were really good without knowing what the future bring. So that probably gives them extra confidence to, again, trust me about this decision that I made during the summer. By the way, you mentioned uh, Kokoshko. What was Kokoshko's connection? No, Kokoshko's connection was uh, purely uh, led by his experience in NBA. You know, we played so many times in, uh, in Turkey uh, against each other and every game, unfortunately, I played well against him. And in national team, we had a couple of conversations and uh, he's really honest and great guy. I really have huge respect to he, uh, about him that uh, he's, I'm very sad that he left our national team because uh, I believe that he had a great potential with his vision, with his approach to be successful with upcoming generation, but his decision we have to always respect. Uh, and during these games uh, and, and some, some conversation, we didn't have so many, but we had some. We, we discussed about that, how he sees me according to players there. You know, he, he, his honest opinion. You know, he, he just co compared me with the players that are on that level with, let's say, second point guards over there. And he just told me honestly that he believes that I can reach that level. And I'm that level, actually. And I was really happy because I, I think that he just told me honestly without any interest. He didn't even have any advice, like go there or there, just to try NBA. But I told him also like, this is my decision. We'll see what, what future we bring. But I, I'm just saying he was one of the guys that I really uh, listened and we had a good conversation. And then NBA scouts try to evaluate, uh, for example, the draft prospect or the Uli player. They usually take that kind of you know, skill, that kind of player and they compare to the, let's say, something close to that style in the NBA. And they also, you know, evaluate the ceiling of that uh, player. When you watch, I don't know how, how many games you usually, what kind of, you know, NBA fan you are, but uh, when you watch NBA, do you see, let's say, players which are a bit quite similar to your game style, to your mentality? And do you see, you know, uh, what shoes uh, could you fill and what kind of, you know, role could you get in nowadays NBA world? Uh, in the past, I was really following everything. Like I follow all basketball games, and I was addicted to basketball. Last four years, I don't follow at all. Really, I know I'm aware of things that are happening, uh, mostly about Euroleague, NBA too, because we have good players from Balkan there, and it's a privilege for me to follow them because I know how difficult it is to play in any level, on the highest level. So I cannot imagine there too. Starting from Jokic, Bogdan, Doncic, Nurkic, all these guys. But uh, for me, uh, I cannot compare myself with someone there uh, because uh, maybe I can sound arrogant or I can sound like whatever. Uh, it's not about that. It's about that I feel that my game style, it's possible to put in that level. 
This is my opinion. I don't know if I'm right or not, but the game style that I have and the, the size and, and everything, it's something that I'm, I believe I can do good things over there. Uh, and that was the main reason why I kept staying in FS. Because even now, why I stayed is that uh, nothing is guaranteed, as I said, and nothing is given for free. Uh, nothing was given, but I still believe the decision to stay in FS was the mo uh, mostly because with connection that I have with Ataman and the freedom that I'm not using against team and against him is something that is hard to get from anyone. And uh, when I look myself in Ceska, I believe that I could reach that. I could reach that freedom, I, can, I could reach that style, but why I should go there if I am on the same level with them and having that freedom to keep playing one more year that way, like with creativity on the point guard position, with being able to to shoot the ball off the screen, uh, off the ball, uh, create assists, uh, being able to play important minutes uh, defensively well. And that's something that I believe I can play everywhere. It's not that I don't, I don't know if really, and also I played against uh, American team in, in China, even though this game was not so important, but I felt this guy on the skin, like Kemba Walker, uh, this guy, uh, Derek White, I'm think, I think from, from Spurs. Uh, white uh, guard, he's mm -hmm. playing for the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, then I don't know, for me, unbelievable guy who I was so shocked how good he is, is Chris Middleton. But this is top level players, like mm -hmm. he's shooting guard 2 8, like it's ridiculous. But on position of point guard, if I'm not able to play second point guard in NBA, okay, then it's, this is my reality. But my, my perspective that I can play this good there. But when it takes in the NBA, there's a lot of about timing and being, you know, on the right spot at the right time. Yeah. And uh, I remember when you talked about your NBA opportunities, uh, you also mentioned that you would like to go to the NBA and you will be, believe that that will be the right situation. How do you imagine the right situation uh, for yourself? Uh, let's say what kind of teams, uh, I'm not saying what kind of team you'd like to play for, but what kind of examples you saw which would fit that picture, how you imagine uh, yourself in the NBA? There is a big reality that I'm aware, of course, uh, they don't know me. They don't know me so well, even though I can play 10 more years as MVP here, they, his, they still have doubts about players from EuroLeague less and less every year because most of the guys are dominating now from Europe and uh, these guys, some of them played in Europe. But still, I think that they, they would rather choose someone from there who has already some experience than giving some extra good chance for some guy from Europe. But uh, I think that for me, the best would be to go either to the club that already has some real vision for the, as a contender, like maybe, I'm just giving an example, like Campazzo did go to Denver, that you would have directly a role, like specifically know what they want, that I would not like so much, but I would accept it because of my age and everything or to go some team that is trying to develop something new with the vision that they can put me in some position uh, to be visible. Uh, one thing that I've said to Sam Presti that we had a conversation, uh, which is, I believe he is amazing guy, and amazing GM and something new for me was, and all this conversation were useful. But when we discuss about my game, it was completely honest that if I don't have a ball or I have no uh, real, real uh, role, I can't be visible. I mean, even this happened to me when I was Jalgiris. I mean, Jalgiris was different because Sharas controlled the game 40 minutes, but still there with my limit options in offense and, and limit time with the ball. And of course, there was a big reason Kevin played well and I'm not saying nothing differently, but that was not me. You understand? I can be solid, but it's not me, full potential. So I told him that similar to this, that I would like to have this ball because I believe that I'm, my mindset is not to kill the team. My mindset is that if I have the ball at the end of the game, I give more positive things than negative. But I mean, this is just, I'm saying my honest opinion, but at the end, I mean, there are so many facts and things had to happen to fit everything together. When I think about your upside in the NBA, uh, I don't want to know to create a hype or overhype you, to overrate you. 
But I have a picture of Luka Doncic, for example, because you have uh, you both share, you know, good size, uh, you both are good floor generals. Uh, okay, Luka is extremely skilled with the way he makes shots, how he creates the opportunities for himself. But for me, the first comparison which I would think about is Luka Doncic. Would you like to talk with Luka, you know, to get some, I don't know, NBA advices uh, or stuff? I mean, I never thought about that calling him because for me, first of all, Luka Doncic is uh, like Jokic. These like this, this, these guys are they they got born once in 50 years, 20 years. I don't know previous generation Dražen Petrović who coach all these guys, but at least in 20 years of generations, it's it's something unbelievable that these guys are doing. Uh, I understand your comparison because uh, I cannot say that I don't see that in my style of the game, but he is really different level. But I would I, I would be happy if he would give me some advice. But as I said, for entering the NBA, I believe there are so many facts that are together with the luck. Which I believe big big important importance of that. Uh, it's it's important to happen before you live there. It's not just how I see myself and what these guys would like to see from me is just they they are working differently. They're working from GM, all things are coming. Coaches are, mm, except some of them, not so, they don't have so big uh, impact on decision. Always they have to listen the whole team from there and the divisions of all of them can be differently. But if I would get similarity of that chances to play with the ball and create, I think that, that can be something useful for, for every team. And in Euroleague, this is something that I reach uh, to play that way, to be, to be able to do actually everything. Like depends on my day that sometimes I can miss, of course, but at the end of the season or at the end of the month or at the end of the game, I can feel it it was worth it because all my shots, all my things that I'm doing are things that I'm practicing. It's not something that I'm dreaming about day before a game and then day after that I'm shooting the ball. And all these things I'm practicing and with the practice I reach the level to be to be able to to shoot them and to play them that way. So thanks for that comparison and that opinion, but I believe that he's different a little bit than me, but I understand your, your point. I think it will be the last NBA-related question but uh, earlier today, I, I interviewed Erwin Ataman and he told that with this team, especially, you know, in the, let's say, in the NBA for agents and Bay markets, adding one, you know, or other star, maybe even this current FS team would be able to make the NBA playoffs. What do you think about that kind of uh, statement? I know that, in, in, you know, your coach uh, likes these statements, but do you, do you see any sense, you know, in that uh, scenario? I always say that I don't, I don't follow none of the opinions, not because I did have no respect for them, but for me, it's just impossible to compare things until you don't feel them, really. Like, that's why I always have uh, a reserve part of my conversation about the NBA, always because I've never been there. I can I really don't believe that it's possible to say anything except you go there and, and really then show it or not show it. And that's why I believe that each player in every every league or coach, whatever you reach and you prove, then it's possible to discuss. This was my biggest change when I moved to Tofash. What I said to my agent at that moment, I said, "Who cares that peop Who cares about me if to if you talk about my talent if I don't show this? Who is who thinks that you? Okay, thank you, but where I show this? Where did I show? When when was the last time that I showed that I have that talent?" So let me play. I need to show that with mistakes and everything. And then we can discuss, am I still talented or am I still having that potential? Still, it's a, the same is about this, these interviews. I mean, I believe that he has always some part of, uh, of conversation that he likes to show a little bit. His, uh, his uh, confidence and everything. And he has really huge confidence about us and about himself. But my personal opinion is that it's impossible to compare now, I mean, to reach play of the NBA. By the way, you mentioned before. I like our style. I like our style and, the, and when we are all ready, we have a really good team, but I don't believe it's, it's easy to compare. By the way, what's the reason? You mentioned that for like four years, you don't follow basketball as much as before. What's the reason behind that? Is it connected? Is it related to your, let's say, inner peace you found on the court, you found in yourself? 
There are a couple of things. Uh, first of all, main reason is that we have enough basketball. Every day we have enough basketball. Uh, I found my different. I found a different way to enjoy basketball. I really enjoy paying, uh, taking care about myself, which means working out extra, uh, paying attention on some additional move, uh, taking care of my food, doing some I don't know extra things for stretching, getting stronger, and this and that. So I'm not cancelled from the basketball world. I'm still dedicated to basketball the same way, maybe even more like that I used to be and uh, that's one part. But second part, it's really we have so many games, we have so many, uh, uh, so hard rhythm in Europe and every game is important so I just want to chill. I, I really dedicate my time to many different things uh, besides basketball because really this gives me uh, um, a peace, this gives me a, a refresh because uh, I want to get in the game always re refresh. Like I don't think about previous game, I don't think about previous move, I just always put myself in position to be ready for a new challenge. And that consistency is actually something that I believe it's one of the biggest things that I bring to the team. Uh, also the reason I was MVP I believe was that, uh, my consistency. From the first game till the last, uh, I was playing always good with small ups and downs and this is the hardest thing in my opinion. You can have shining two months, one month, three months, but to give that all year long, it's, it's, it's hard. And one of the things that I'm doing is actually that. I'm not thinking about basketball. I'm thinking about different things. And my course is always basketball, main course, but with additional things. And that's why I stopped. I mean, uh, sometimes I watch my friends. I have so many friends from the basketball world, but it's more like pleasure for me to enjoy watching them. But just to be followed by basketball world and be involved there, I don't think this is good for me anymore because However, I see basketball every day, I see some scouting every day and it's, it's already enough. And that's why, I mean, I think this is not the only way to succeed, but this is my way. People are different. So some people watching 10 games per day, I cannot. I think there are different things to enjoy in life too. What's the best uh, thing for you outside of basketball? I don't do some special things. Uh, I have I have new business. This is something that really uh, my approach for basketball is something that I can copy to everything. Really, to all my things in life, because my approach to basketball is uh, very simple, and uh, I believe in that approach and this system. And this system brought me to successful uh, the successful levels of, of basketball. And now I think this is also possible to put in every other, uh, how can I say, part of the life. So this business is something that I'm doing really serious, not that much to take a uh, concentration away from basketball, just enough that I have really concrete obligation. And that's something that really I'm working on good. Uh, one more thing that I'm, I felt first time this summer, and I'm trying to, to control myself about that is that working with the young guys. I spend a couple of practices with Mega Alex young team and I really like to work with the guys. I really feel that I have that uh, maybe talent or, or desire to, to help kids, not only young kids, mostly guys from 18 to 22 years old, because this is the period that most of the guys are get lost. And in Serbia, and I, I realize in every country too, because that's the moment that most of the coaches are not patient about them. Most of them are not ready to sacrifice their extra time spending with them. And, and that's something that I, I realized this summer that maybe possibly can be my future. So is there that coach in the I don't know, but uh, working with them is something that really makes me happy. I like to see improvement when I, when I help someone. This is, this is definitely. What kind of business? It's, it's I mean, this is private things, nothing, not not for the public. Okay. It's, it's good business. And talking about the FS, uh, Atman mentioned that after the last game of Turkish uh, league finals, when you won the championship uh, in the locker room, he told that he already told everybody that he will stay, and he hopes that everybody else uh, will stay. You know, and he wants to defend the title with the same uh, team. But when you left that locker room, locker room, then you, you know, got separated with the team after celebrating and, and stuff like that. Uh, did you have that feeling that maybe it was not kind of the last dance of this amazing group which started to play since 2018? Or you believe that for sure you guys are uh, going to gather together? 
No, I didn't didn't believe that we will gather again together. Uh, first of all, I I was also thinking about NBA seriously. So starting from me, and then I knew that Shane also has still that uh, that hope and and desire to go in NBA too. For the rest of the guys, I kind of knew because some of them were under the contract that they would stay. And uh, you know, one thing that I, uh, I have learned last year with us, with FS, is that we are capable of doing everything. Uh, to screw the games, to screw the first part of the season, then coming back in the best shape and finish the season the way we finished. So this is something that, if you look from outside, can be risky. It can be hard to go through once again or m more and more. But with me, it was different because when I decided to stay, um, the first time I felt like I'm going home. First time I felt like I'm going to the group of guys that I just accept all of them. Like, I don't really think anymore who is feeling how. If someone don't want to play, it's his decision. If someone want to play, I will be there to help him. And this is something that was really useful for us. And, and, and maybe the most important thing in the second part of the season that we really accept each other. There was no, uh, there was starting from me, there was no time that we uh, blame each other. And when you feel that, it's something that is hard to reach and it's coming with the years spending together and it's coming with a personal character. So when I realized that I have that feeling here, we really didn't know what will, what will happen with Shane, but I was fine. I was calm that my decision is correct, that I have the group of guys that I will go everywhere with them and I don't want to change them. I don't want to go and tell anybody like, hey, please do this way, this way. No, if you don't feel differently, be yourself and I will accept you like that. I was really sad that Sertac left because I really like him as a player and he is a perfect fit for, for, for our system. But this is the life and we have, I think, still great, great uh, tank uh, in, in, in Tibor and, and Dunstan. That's my opinion. And with the young guy, Petrusha, we can we can compensate that miss. And uh, everybody else stayed because I believe the same reason. We, we finally have that chemistry that, you know, as I said it before, like you always, I, I mean, I started to change things to reach the level of happiness, to reach the level of, of that I finally have everything. And when I reached it here, I asked myself why I should go somewhere else if everything is here. If you look for everything, like not only basketball wise, like life and, and the city and organization, FS is like, I mean, NBA organization and, and, everything else. So I believe everyone saw that. Even Shea, when he was discussing about NBA, he realized that there is no need to force going to force that way to go into NBA. And it was same with me. And when I realized that we will stay together, it was totally good that I'm coming back to same environment and with some maybe slow start or some good start. It doesn't matter. We know that at the end we will do something good. What will be good? We don't know now and nobody knows, but Hopefully it will be something something similar. Did you talk with Shane during the summer what you're gonna do? Did you share your experience? About yeah, me and Shane, we really have, uh, in, in, from my opinion and my perspective, really good relationship. Uh, it's uh, first of all uh, direct, honest relationship, like without so many talk, without so many unnecessary talk, mm -hmm. like chatting every day and seeing what what each other is doing. Now we have. We have big respect on the court. I have big respect to him, and I always say this is uh, this is the best quality player that I ever played with. I'm talking about the club ways, uh, and and I'm always happy to play with him. I also said that to the club when they asked me about him. I said that I would really like him to stay because I think he's if he has something different than ever. This is when the games are on the line. This is. He's killer. So with that kind of player, you can always feel confident about hard situations, like hard moments, hard months, hard two months, whatever, because he has that ability to turn things uh, in the positive way. And all together with us, we, we have that capacity. And between us, uh, even last summers, we always discussed because I have the respect to him and he has respect to me for our game. And he always gave me advices for some things also about the NBA. He gave me some advices uh, and uh, I was really trying to 
little bit convince him to stay because uh, I would be really sad that he left because I think what he was your main pitch? No, the main pitch, I never, th uh, you know what's my philosophy? I never like to make things by force, oh. really. I believe that whatever you do in life by force, even you reach some goal, mm -hmm. you don't feel pleasure because you gave so much and the things in life are simple. But if you let the things happen and do beside them everything possible that you can, I mean, we discuss and telling him, hey, I would like to, I would like that you stay. For me, it's enough. Mm -hmm. I cannot go every day and please stay. What you, no, this is for me forcing and fake. Mm -hmm. So I just told him my honest opinion. He knew it and that was it for me. And every, every, I mean, two weeks, I checked just his health, how it, is, how it was. And that's it. And uh, we kept we kept continuing that kind of relationship, and that's something that I really believe it's it's a, a health healthy relationship between us. He all, always know that he has my back, and I have his back, and we we really like that. You mentioned that there was a moment when you guys stopped blaming uh, each other. Uh, I was a bit surprised. I always thought that you had that amazing super extra chemistry and stuff like that, but. As far as I understood, the last season when you lost to CSK in Moscow by 35 points, you had a big meeting. Like uh, it was a long, long meeting which almost went, you know, until the morning. Was that kind of, you know, turning point, you know, for, for that situation to switch into, you know, a winning path you went to later? We can say, we can say like that uh, because uh, that was a meeting that first time uh, as a team we we sat together and we said it loud, uh, loudly, like uh, what what each player thinks. And uh, before that, I always say uh, in every media day, I repeat like uh, maybe it sounds sometimes that I'm overthinking or not, but this is, I believe, our pure, pure uh, real reality. Uh, we are not a team that we can plan. Really, we are. We still after three years together. We can relax ourselves in any game. If we are focused, even today against Tofash, we relaxed by thinking that they will lose by themselves. No, we have to play every game serious. And we have to play every game maximum that we have at that moment. We, I don't expect from each player to die on the court. And that means maximum. No, but maximum means that you have to have serious approach and you have to give your best at that, these meanings that you got. Like that, we are always dangerous. For last year, we had a situation that with obvious problems that like Corona injuries and uh, all these things, we had that lack of concentration, lack of responsibility, lack of uh, respect to others. Uh, and that was really things that hurt us. We lost so many games by two, three points, but at the end it lost. It was a loss. So when we settled down and talk about everything, uh, we just came to the edge, like we couldn't go anywhere else. We, we couldn't keep playing that way. We couldn't spend time together anymore. The same way as, as before that match. Because we, we realized that everything getting so fake. Everything getting so... All, none of us had a word that had some value. All words was nothing. And when we had that meeting, we tried to be honest to each other. And one of the most important things that I mentioned also is that in the beginning of the season, we, together with our coach speech and with some of the players, we already reached Final Four. And it's impossible, like, it's impossible for any, everybody, of course, for us too. So our focus has to change and we had to change our approach to play game by game. Like that, we can be really always solid and good. And second thing was to stop blaming each other. Like, you can feel that, you can feel on the court that, you know, what somebody means, like, you make body face, body language, whatever, uh, different. And then these guys inside of your team always feel that. And turning point was actually that, that we have to be aware that this is the same team, same coach that we had a year before and two years before so that we were killing. So why to look for some reason to blame each other? It's impossible. Like there is problem inside of us. It started from individual per, uh, performance and individual approach to the game. We started little by little to change, but uh, at the end of the day, we, we didn't lose our potential. The potential was there. So we, we reached again very fast our level of confidence and, and team chemistry because we just started to be more responsible for everything in the court, more 
supportive to each other, more humble, without thinking that we are something special. And in the end, we 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 played very well. You look now you're really champions. You've been to few final fours before. Uh, you you were the best team in that uh, pandemic uh, season, and you also have the same players. Uh, you have that continuity. Although there are you know some veteran players who are aging. The main question I think that the main question not only for me but for a lot of basketball people is if that team will be as hungry as it was before. You know, chasing that for you team. think. What makes you believe? You know, what kind of team you saw coming back again in one group after winning the Euroleague? What makes you believe that this team will be hungry enough, you know, to repeat uh, the title? Yeah, that was something that was going through my mind uh, when I was in, in, in the moment of decision, whether to stay or not, because I had this in my mind. But uh, there, are, there, are, there are one thing that uh, I don't believe everybody see uh about us uh we have older team experienced team but each player if you take individually from the team has something that you can't buy you can't build you can't uh okay, copy yes and this is self responsibility self uh, proud pride how you call it mm. and when i came to fs And when we were together, nine new foreigners, 2018, we had this tournament in, in Bormio and I realized that at that moment. That's why I'm saying we can't calculate games. We have to play every game series. Like that, it's a matter of time that we will break the game or, or we will lose stuff. We will not win all the games, of course, but it's really hard for us to lose because when you have these characters, each by each player, You don't need to worry for serious games. You, need, you don't need to worry for uh, serious part of the season because each player will be enough motivated because we know our, our roles and starting from me, Shane, Kruno, Chris, Brian, then Rodi, James, Adrian, all these guys, when you look now, it wasn't easy to understand that at, in first year, but we had a fast result, so we understood that. Each guy is motivated personally and you don't need to worry. It's not easy probably to motivate them same after winning, but this is not my job. I mean, what is my job always, and I always say that I always try to be example, an example that it's possible. I'm always motivated and uh, I came to this season really like I didn't win nothing. I'm trying to do same way as I did before, like by practicing, by uh, it's not It's not easy for me maybe to to be, uh, how can I say, like not hungry, but to play in the pre in preseason games full core press, which is maybe additional example of giving uh, to the others as a good, good one. But still, my work ethic is same even more. My taking care of body is same even more than last year. So at least I try to do that way. And then I believe this is, This can be an ex example for others too, even, I'm, even though I'm the youngest. But I think that this is in the game too, example for others that don't be lazy, just do your job. And like that, I, no, I'm not worried that we will be hungry enough. It will be probably part of a season that each player has some not great momentum, which is acceptable because the season is long, so many games. But uh, at the end, I believe we have that capacity to stay Motivated for sure. The last question. Uh, we started, you know, the conversation, and our main topic was, let's say, decision by a top free agent. And I want to put you in a hypothetical situation. We will have the yearly fantasy game for the upcoming season on basketball.com, and we ask uh, basketball people, for example, Ataman, we ask Schiller, we will ask other players and coaches. If there will be such a hypothetical situation that, uh, you know, all players leading their teams, all teams are looking for new players, they don't have, z they have zero players for their upcoming season and the current yearly market. And you get the number one overall pick of yearly draft, let's say. Who would you pick as your number one player? Me? Yeah. Uh huh. Like uh, if I'm coach? If, if your coach is, uh -huh. about, yeah. Or the GM, no matter what. Uh, Shane. Shane, Shane. Why? 
I say all the same. He is he is the guy that has something different. You know, for me, uh, we we discussed now in, in Elpa meeting with uh, Shengelia with him about him and James, Mike James, about talent. I believe James is crazy talent. I mean, this this what he does is is really unique and. Uh, mm, and uh, he is definitely top level of talent that I ever play against. But Shane has something that I've never seen inside of the club. Uh, things uh, I saw a little bit with Bogdanovic that, but this killer mentality when the things are going on the line, and this is something that not so many players have. This. And you can count on him always. He can have ups and downs. It's just a matter of his of course, physical shape and, and the momentum of his mindset. But at the end of the day, he's so fair guy to the, to the job. He's so fair to his teammate. He's humble and uh, a great player. Great, great pick as well as uh, great conversation and you know great philosophy be, behind your decision this summer. Vasily Mitic uh, on the opponents podcast. Thanks a lot for everybody, for everybody who watched us. You can follow us on basketnews.com and also on basketnews YouTube channel and on all the main audio platforms.